so much for joining us for this Friday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Dave Percy. On our hazardous weather graphic, uh, winter storm or actually blizzard warning out here for St. Lawrence Island uh, up to the Bering Strait coast, north side of the Seward Peninsula there, as well as the northwest coast here. That's out uh, for tonight until 6 a.m. Saturday. Uh, snow, blowing snow, winds gusting as high as uh, 35 to 45 miles per hour uh, will reduce visibilities to less than a quarter mile at times in these areas. And that probably won't occur at St. Lawrence Island until the cold front pushes back through and those temperatures drop back down below freezing. Winter weather advisory here for the Noatak Valley area on down in towards Selawick and Kotzebue uh, for uh, snow and blowing snow. Uh, reducing visibility times to less than half a mile. Could pick up uh, anywhere from one to four inches of snow or so. That same pattern occurring here along the Arctic coast and most of the uh, central and eastern north slope as well. This is actually for later on as that uh, system moves eastward. Then over here on the extreme eastern Arctic coast, there's a, uh, a blizzard watch out for late Saturday night and Sunday for uh, blizzard conditions as winds uh, expected to kick up to uh, 40, 50 miles an hour out of the west, southwest in gusts, and uh, of course that'll create near blizzard conditions and blowing snow. Moving on to satellite imagery, <clears throat> you can see a pretty nice day here across the southeast coast. We've got uh, low pressure here in the Gulf of Alaska, band of clouds out associated with a trough, that all gradually shifting eastward there, and showers mostly off the coast here of the uh, north Gulf Coast. Uh, more in the Middleton Island area, but really just clouds extending up to the north there through the eastern interior areas. And not a bad day on the Arctic coast. Actually, some clear skies reported in the Barrow area with uh, just clouds elsewhere. Very nice day, south central Alaska here, Kenai Peninsula, all the way down to Kodiak Island, up into Bristol Bay. And then uh, a couple of uh, disturbances pushing their way eastward here into the northwest with some areas of light snow and snow showers with that uh, really kind of dissipating down through here with mostly just clouds and uh, any precipitation occurring is quite light in that area. Also uh, pretty good conditions here over the southeast Bering Sea. Earlier on uh, clear skies reported at St. Paul and pretty nice all the way down to Alaska, the Alaska Peninsula and then you pick up some clouds west of there along the Aleutian chain but all of the uh, storminess being held back out to the west by fairly strong high pressure here uh, dominating the Aleutians that's just uh, actually up here over the southern Bering Sea and some of that flow rotating the clouds from the northwest there into to the uh, St. Paul St. George area and then some of this uh, breaking away or coming over the top and pushing into the northwest coast and that's what's bringing the snow and blowing snow to, from St. Lawrence Island northwestward there across the Chukchi Sea today that's on the increase during the afternoon hours. On the chart uh, there's the front back to the west there roughly in that position. Warm front here mixing the uh, snow with rain St. Lawrence Island this afternoon specifically at Gamble not so much at Savunga staying all snow there and then areas of snow with that uh, weaker system here pushing eastward mostly along and south of the uh, well, the upslope areas of the western mountains here, Seward Peninsula, uh, seen some areas of light snow at times. Nothing really heavy at all, but here on, under the high pressure, those clouds are really dissipating and moving eastward. Not much precipitation at all there, if any. And that extends down to the uh, Alaska Peninsula, but uh, basically sunny skies are mostly sunny on up to Kodiak Island. Through south central Alaska, we had a few lingering light snow showers occurring along the, uh, well, from about Denali, eastward there, right along the Alaska range and then get in some clearing for the upper Yukon Valley and this low pressure area in the North Gulf Coast here or the Gulf of Alaska south of the North Gulf Coast keeping uh, most of the shower activity offshore but that edging its way eastward we'll see tonight a uh, chance of snow showers reaches the central coast here Port Alexander, Sitka, those areas Possibly the coastal areas of Prince of Wales Island form mixed rain and snow. Otherwise, it's very cloudy over the interior areas there. And dry for the most part, less clouds up to the north. And clearing 
skies stay clear here across south central Alaska down to Kodiak Island with 1,041 millibar high parked over the Yukon and Kuskokwim Delta areas. And then on the north side of that uh, west-southwesterly flow, the system driving eastward there with the snow and blowing snow pushing in toward the uh, central Arctic coastal areas, north slope, extending back to the southwest across St. Lawrence Island. Lighter snow amounts in through here. And uh, still, but that blizzard warning still out for those areas for anywhere you get those winds. Could reduce visibilities down to a quarter mile or less. Snow advancing eastward looks like into the Koyukuk Valley, mostly the northern areas to the southern slopes of the Brooks Range. Dry for the eastern Arctic coast, still some lingering showers with the remnants of that uh, trough here over toward the eastern interior into uh, possibly the White Mountains, Tanah Valley, this area of snow. Pretty scattered and light in nature and uh, mostly along or north of the Alaska Range. Could see a snow shower over the Talkeetnas, maybe otherwise Prince William Sound staying dry and those gusty northerly winds. Uh, 25 to maybe 35 miles an hour continuing there, Resurrection Bay. Channel areas of the North Gulf Coast in the Copper River Delta. Uh, pretty uh, kind of breezy, but nothing too terribly strong. And uh, easterly flow here, but should stay mostly clear, or variably cloudy at worst here for the Alaska Peninsula and the Aleutians, as well as the Bering Sea, just areas of clouds, possible fog out there. All the precip uh, north of the area back up across the Russian Far East, and we'll see for uh, the day on uh, for tomorrow. First system weakens into a trough, but still a fairly good area of uh, snow advancing eastward on the Arctic coast there through the North Slope, Brooks Range, and then uh, scattering out as you head south down this trough to just uh, some flurries or light snow showers possible there north side of the Yukon Delta, improving back across Seward Peninsula, and again, uh, Tomorrow afternoon looking much better than today there for St. Lawrence Island. Just cloudy skies, much lighter winds. Easterly winds on the increase looking for a gale Saturday here for the central and uh, maybe the eastern Aleutians due to this uh, front here is putting the squeeze on the atmosphere with a very strong high near Nunavak Island. And that frontal boundary, those east winds will kick up to possibly gust 40 to 50 miles an hour out of the east there. And uh, rain and snow showers, pretty good chance of there over the, especially the southern southeast coast, lingering through most of the day, gradually diminishing back to the north here, staying dry with some sunshine, Lynn Canal Glacier Bay from about Juneau over to Elfin Cove, sunshine, North Gulf Coast. Outlook for Sunday. Uh, again, this uh, pretty strong trough there uh, brings that blizzard possibility to the eastern Beaufort Sea coastline, otherwise back to the west. Completely different story. Central coast could be uh, mostly clear with light winds. And then you pick up some flurries and clouds there from about Point Lay on down to Cape Lisburn and Point Hope. Otherwise, high pressure uh, makes for light wind. St. Lawrence Island, the Bering Strait, keeps the uh, western interior dry. Sunshine for south central Alaska. Lingering snow showers along the Alaska Range, 40-mile uh, country, cutting off in the Copper River Basin, sunshine north Gulf Coast, sunshine for the Panhandle, and a weakening front out there brings a chance of rain to the central and western Aleutians. Lows tonight, uh, 0 to 5 below or 0 to 10 below here over the eastern interior, near 0 to 5 Copper River Basin, upper 20s near 30 out there to the west, and mid to upper 30s for the Aleutians. Otherwise, uh, mostly in the 20s, lower 30s for the Panhandle, highs tomorrow afternoon into the uh, 20s up there along the Arctic coast, even uh, popping up above freezing there, say for uh, in the Kobuk Valley. Ambler mid 30s uh, to upper 30s here as you head south to the Alaska Peninsula, then you get into the lower 40s there. Same thing for the central Aleutians. Mostly in the 40s for the Panhandle. Lows the next morning uh, looking like this, upper 20s in the southeast coast, otherwise uh, five below to 10 above up north and about the same for the highs on Sunday. And now, Aviation weather around Alaska. A lot of IFR here over the north central interior from, well, actually around Nunavak Island, up across the Yukon Delta, St. Lawrence Island, where the blizzard warning's out, and then across the Seward Peninsula, eastward through the interior, over to the border, and right on down to just about the uh, eastern Alaska range there, and toward uh, Northway and Toke. Marginal VFR south of there, uh, at least to start the day out here, from about the Talkeetna is in over the north or the western part of the Copper River Basin. VFR farther down to the south, some marginal stuff over the Panhandle. IFR, central western Arctic coast. Good swath of VFR out here over the Bering Sea to the Fox Islands. Then some more IFR moving into the far western Aleutians. But that uh, sort of retreats back away from the area uh, by the afternoon. 
And just some marginal VFR for ADAC and Atka. Good VFR here forecast for the Pribilof Islands, Fox, or the uh, Eastern Aleutians, up across Bristol Bay, Alaska Peninsula, Southern Alaska here. IFR though, uh, right around Denali, northward into the uh, Tanana Valley, on up to the Eastern Brooks Range area. Better conditions back to the west, although uh, still some IFR hanging tough here on the south side of the Seward Peninsula, Norton Sound, down into the Yukon Delta, Panhandle, all VFR. That continues into uh, Sunday morning as well. Nothing but VFR, Dixon entrance right up to uh, Skagway, White Pass to Yakutat. I, uh, VFR holds here over south central Alaska. Although we got some marginal VFR trying to uh, get over the Alaska range there and toward western Cook Inlet. Back to a uh, widespread IFR here out over the uh, southwest coast or from Kuskokwim Bay and northward there into the Nordtak Valley and northeast now across the uh, Eastern North Slope and Arctic Coastal areas, and holding uh, VFR here through the Eastern Bering Sea, Alaska Peninsula, and IFR still lurking just southwest of Shimianat too. But that will advance uh, eastward here by the Sunday afternoon, spreading to possibly Atka Island late in the afternoon, with marginal VFR showing up around the Kulski, staying VFR for the Pribilofs, Alaska Peninsula, and uh, marginal along the southwest coast. IFR now restricted mostly around St. Lawrence Island, Good VFR over the western interior, down to Kodiak Island, some IFR up there over the eastern Arctic coast and north slope areas. Staying VFR here, north Gulf Coast, Panhandle, down to Dixon Entrance. Passes Anatovic, IFR uh, tomorrow for most of the day, same forecast for Adigan as well. Looks uh, like an IFR type day up there for both passes for the Alaska Range, though. Lake Clark and Merrill, good VFR tomorrow, however, rainy. Uh, possible marginal VFR on the western entrance, otherwise VFR. And for windy, starting out VFR becoming marginal uh, throughout the day and into the afternoon. And for Isabel, VFR becoming marginal here on the northern entrance in the afternoon. And for uh, Mintasta, starting out marginal and then becoming VFR fairly by late morning and lasting through the afternoon until evening. Tanita, VFR the entire day. Same forecast for Portage, good VFR flying there and Chilkoot and White, VFR. Freezing levels at the surface here, right near the Pribilofs, down to the Alaska Peninsula, up along the coastline here and along the outer coastline of uh, most of the panhandle, except cutting across northern Prince of, Prince of Wales Island there in across northeast Dixon entrance. And for icing, we've got uh, areas of uh, mixed here up over the north and northeast interior areas, uh, tapering off back to the southwest. And uh, that will see above about 5,000 feet. Otherwise, pretty icing free here to the south, the Aleutians. This area here probably won't reach the Aleutians, or forecast to reach the Aleutians sometime Saturday night and into uh, Sunday. Otherwise, through tomorrow, no icing expected there. And just some scattered icing, mixed type icing here over the southern southeast coast, gradually diminishing through the afternoon, so you have that upper level system there. And for the uh, jet stream, there's the uh, upper low responsible for the keeping it unsettled there over the southern southeast coast through most of the day tomorrow, but gradually improving as that slips on off to the east. Otherwise, high pressure here to the north, although good westerly flow over the top of this ridge, carrying those uh, disturbances eastward there across the uh, Arctic coast north slope areas, and then some of that moisture slipping on down into the uh, west coast areas. Otherwise, no big storms out here over the Bering Sea with uh, the other branch of the jet well to the south. And at 9,000 feet, we've got a uh, good westerly flow over the top of this ridge here, just very close to Nunavak Island, up to 40 to 45 knots in the interior, turning northerly 20 to 25, same thing at 3,000 feet. So looking at the turbulence, Aleutians, northwest interior looks uh, pretty moderate, it's otherwise smooth for the panhandle. <laughs>
It warms the earth and grows our food. While the sun and the space between may seem pleasant from our perspective, it's anything but peaceful. At its surface exists a chaotic state of eruptions and radiation. And unlike Vegas, what happens at the sun doesn't stay at the sun. Space weather is essentially emissions from the sun, uh, radiation, magnetic field that erupts from the solar surface, pumped out into space, sometimes right towards Earth. When it impacts the Earth, it impacts our technology. That's what we call space weather. These solar events and their effects at Earth can disrupt systems we take for granted. From causing blackouts to the power grid, to delaying offshore drilling operations due to inaccurate GPS data. Interference with communication systems can force air traffic to reroute and impact rescue response and coordination. Outside our atmosphere, solar radiation can harm astronauts and the systems they depend on. The good news is that these eruptions can be detected early. Forecasters at the NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center in Boulder, Colorado, have their eyes on the sun at all times. The Space Weather Prediction Center is part of the National Weather Service and is very much like a normal weather forecast office. We're here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're looking at data, we're looking at imagery, we're looking at model outputs. As conditions develop, we put out alerts, warnings, and watches of imminent activity to our customers so they can take action. In many ways, forecasting space weather is a lot like forecasting hurricanes. Those who rely on space weather forecasts, like electric power grid managers, are informed early on and can begin taking protective action. When we see an eruption on the sun, space weather forecasters will issue a watch. This is much like a hurricane watch. When a hurricane sits offshore of Miami, for example, perhaps 48 hours out, we too can see way in advance that something may be coming towards the Earth. As the storm moves toward us, it hits a monitoring spacecraft orbiting a million miles away from Earth. It's kind of our, our buoy sitting out there offshore and that hurricane about 30, 45 minutes before it makes landfall, we'll get the measurements from the buoy. That's what the spacecraft does for us. That big eruption that left the sun hits the spacecraft. Now we've got the measurements of exactly what's going to impact us here on Earth. And we issue the warnings to give the power grid a heads up that the storm is now imminent. An interesting element to this whole process is that when the forecasters issue the alert, the power grid receives the alert, takes the necessary actions to protect the grid, the average citizen never knows anything ever happened. The number of customers who rely on space weather information continues to grow. As our reliance on technology increases, so will our need for constant monitoring of the sun. Space weather affects technologies. As conditions develop, we put out alerts, warnings, and watches to our customers so they can take action. GPS has changed society. Most people don't realize how remarkable and how many different applications there are. The GPS has become an integral part, not just of our daily lives as far as cell phones and guidance for our cars and mapping, but the whole uh, system in agriculture is really relying heavily on high accuracy GPS. 
So they're using GPS to plant those seeds with centimeter accuracy. And then they can come behind it and, and irrigate and fertilize right where that seed is with that one centimeter accuracy. The GPS creates a line for the operator that he can steer along. Or you go to another level and the operator doesn't steer anymore and the tractor has an automatic steering system on it, much like a cruise control on a car, except for when I push the button, it doesn't drive a set speed. When I push a button, it stays on a predefined line. You don't even need lights. You can do it at nighttime. You program your GPS and it's driving that tractor for you. So it's, uh, it's huge and it's changing the way that the farmers farm the fields. Six or seven days out. There's an interest in GPS applications from space weather side because when the sun is erupted, it causes GPS to falter and in some cases it doesn't work at all. Productivity may suffer to a certain degree in that there's no way that I as a human being can steer as good eight hours a day as a, a GPS system is going to do. It's going to be the same all day long. Some of the other application technologies those are going to be gone. We're not going to have the ability to do good section control on sprayers and planters and fertilizer applicators without GPS. We see a huge growing customer base in so many different industries, so many different sectors now relying on GPS and high precision GPS. They're all big customers for us. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Today's sea ice analysis uh, showing uh, roughly from about St. Lawrence Island, the heavier ice, but some more open areas or thinner ice on the north side there. And then kind of a reduction from what we've seen earlier on here down along the southwest coast into Bristol Bay. And not much change over the next few days here expected. Uh, into next week, winds will become northerly out here again, so <clears throat> at that time next week, uh, sometime next week, we expect the ice to start advancing south and southwestward again, and that will begin to close off the uh, north sides of the islands and the shores there that have seen uh, thinner ice concentrations. Moving on to coastal water forecasts, uh, north to northwest 10 to 15 here for the central and south coast, up to the north, northeast winds at 20, 7 foot seas. 30 knot northerlies there for northern Lynn Canal, maybe some higher gusts, small craft advisories out also for Stevens Passage, light southeast winds for Clarence Strait. And uh, that light wind condition and slight seas continue for Clarence Strait on Sunday with northerlies at about 20 for Stevens Passage, north 25, small craft advisories continue for northern Lynn Canal, north 20 on the south coast, lighter winds from the north up uh, on the northern coast there with seas uh, down to 4 to 5 feet. And Prince William Sound tomorrow, north winds 15 knots, seas 3 feet. Northerly winds 15 knots with 5 foot seas here for the North Gulf Coast. Barren Islands, north 25, small craft advisories there, and then back down to 20 knots from the northwest for Kachemak Bay. Cook Inlet, northerly 10 to 15 knots with seas 2 to 3 feet. And no change in store for Sunday here for Cook Inlet with uh, northerly winds in that 10 to 15 knot range and 2 to 3 foot seas. Northwest 20 knots, pick up to 25 knots out of the northwest for the Barren Islands and uh, north winds 15 to maybe 20 knots here along the eastern coast and then for the uh, Prince William Sound zone north 15 seas maybe three feet. Kodiak Island uh, north to northwest 15 to 20 knots tomorrow with seas up to six feet there and uh, Alaska Peninsula got gales coming into the picture here especially from Castle Cape westward there on the south side and northeast increasing to 30 knots there on the Bering Sea side Prince, or, uh, Bristol Bay northeast to 20 and the outlook for Sunday, small craft advisories here, east winds 30 knots on the Pacific side of the peninsula, Bering Sea side northeast 25, northeast 20 for uh, Bristol Bay, light west winds here for, or I'm sorry, light northeast winds, Sitkanak to Castle Cape, and westerlies of 15 there along eastern Kodiak Island, Shelkoff Strait, uh, light northeasterlies. 
Uh, Lucian's tomorrow, 30 to 40 knot winds with the gales south of the islands here from the Fox Islands in toward the Adak Atka area. Again, 40 knots south with seas 18 to 21 feet. 30 knots on the north side with 10 to 12 foot seas. Small craft advisories on out to the west there, 25 to 30 knots. And for Sunday, uh, easterly is 25 to 30 out here west uh, from, well, actually west of Adak on out. And then they pick up the 30 knots here for the central Aleutians. And we're looking at gales holding on south of the uh, eastern Aleutian areas with uh, seas around 18 feet. Otherwise, north side, 30 knots with seas at 10 to 14. For the southwest coast, south of Nunavik Island, we've got northeast winds at about 15 knots with four foot seas. North of the island, southwest at 15. And then westerlies at about 20. So coming down there for St. Lawrence Island and uh, southerlies for St. Matthew Island at 20. East winds coming up to 25 knots for the Pribilofs with seas building to eight feet. And for Sunday, we've got uh, small craft advisories here, St. Matthew Island, down to uh, the Pervilofs there with uh, 30 knot winds expected sustained, seas at about 10 feet, northeast 20 here, south of Nunavak Island. Winds become lighter as you head north there, down to 10 knots now for St. Lawrence Island under pretty strong high pressure. And for the Arctic coast, uh, west side, west, 25 knot, uh, knots about sums up, so, except from Cape Thompson to the Bering Strait coast tomorrow. Winds westerly is coming down to 20 knots and south-southwest 25, brisk wind advisories all along the Beaufort Sea coast tomorrow. And then the outlook for Monday, uh, gales into the picture, I'm sorry, for Sunday, gale force winds to go along with that uh, blizzard watch for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. Otherwise, brisk wind advisories back to the central coast, 25 to 30 knots, west 20 knots here on the west side. Lighter southeast winds from the Bering Strait on up to Cape Beaufort. And for tonight, we've got this system pushing snow and blowing snow inland, uh, pushing it in with winter weather advisories, western Arctic coast southward. We've got blizzard warnings out for the uh, northwest coast, the Seward Peninsula, Shishmaref to the Bering Strait, all the way down to St. Lawrence Island. That's uh, for tonight until 6 a.m. tomorrow as this uh, pushes eastward. Lingering snow showers in the east, dry, light winds, and mostly clear here. Southern Alaska, still some channel northerly winds down to the south. And that's all I got time for. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>